What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Matt, and welcome back to Let's Play Newer Super Mario Bros. DS. In the previous video, we took on World 3. Now, here we are in World 4, the scary world. Oh, no. But, I mean, how scary can, like, 2D Mario really be? What are they gonna do? Put a boo in front of me? Forget about it. It's not even scary. I don't know why I sort of slipped into, like, a Brooklyn accent there, but, uh, I'm actually going insane, guys. Like, <laughs> no joke. This series is cursed. I'm just convinced that this entire video series is cursed. But now, like, I'm just determined to see it through to the end because of that. Like, I want to overcome all these challenges just because it's absurd. Just the sheer amount of random issues that are happening for literally no reason. Like, this video, for example. I went to go record this with, um my normal software that I've been using for every other video in this series thus far but for whatever reason it just would not detect the game and let me record so I spent like the entire evening trying to figure out why and fix it couldn't fix it so now I'm using like a completely different recording software which I don't normally use for recording games so I have no idea how this video is going to turn out it might look Decent it might look absolutely terrible. I won't know until like after I'm done recording so that's gonna be Great like I may have to just like record this video for another You know time and I really don't want to do that. So oh uh, man. I don't know. We'll just see what happens I guess it's been it's been something else like never before as a series caused this many problems in such a short amount of time and I feel bad for like bringing this up constantly but like I need to vent about this because it's insane like the game is cursed that's the only way that I can describe it all right so I actually did realize that um I missed the secret exit in world 4-1 so this is just sort of like added in before I move on to the next level because well I wanted to put this here for the sake of like world progression but uh yeah I didn't realize that I missed this until about like the third level in this world but yeah, you go left and bada bing, bada boom, there's your secret exit. It's really, really easy to get to as long as you don't forget it. I mean, how often do they hide things behind where you start? All right, now that we got that, though, uh, back to the present. So at this point, like, I'm just continuing this series out of determination to finish it because nothing will stop me from finishing this game. Like, I've never canceled a project due to technical reasons, and it ain't gonna start now. Now, I would lie if I said that I didn't think about it, because I did. Like, it crossed my mind after episode two. I was like, all right, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Maybe I just, like, cancel this project and move on to something else because... I don't know if I want to deal with, like, all these random technical problems, but at this point, you know, we're at World 4. By the time we finish up this video, we'll be halfway done with the game. I'm not going to quit now, man. I can deal with these minor annoyances and, uh, you know, get through this game. And the weird thing is, like, some of the issues I've been having aren't even related to the game itself. I think in, like, Episode 1, I mentioned that I was, uh, building a new computer. Well, the plan was to have that computer already built and be using it now at this point. But, like, here's what happened. So, since, you know, I'm building my own computer, I'm picking out all the parts, you know, I'm doing this custom water cooling loop to keep all my components cool. But, um, because I'm doing it custom, I planned out this loop for my water cooling setup around a specific case. And that case wasn't set to release until... January 15th so what happened was the 15th came around and I was waiting all day like refreshing the order page on the website because my plan was to get the case and the last batch of parts on the same day that way they would get delivered by you know Friday or the end of the week I could build it and test it over the weekend and by Monday I would be ready to actually use the machine that was the plan well what happened was you know the 15th came I was checking the website all day but uh, what happened was it went from, you know, hey, this is coming out soon to sold out pretty much instantly. So I missed, like, my chance to order that case. Now, you might be thinking, Matt, it's just a case. Why can't you get a different one? Well, 
it basically goes back to that liquid cooling loop. I designed it with the feature set of that case in mind. And while sure there are other cases that do sort of share those similar um, feature sets, none of them really checked all the boxes the way this case does. And um, the other option that I was considering was also out of stock. So like even if I wanted to, I couldn't get another case to uh, finish this build any sooner. Um, thankfully, what ended up happening was on the 16th or whatever, um, the product page for the case went up for pre-order. So I did pre-order the case and um, crossing my fingers, hopefully it'll actually ship on the 23rd. But like, bro, I didn't even know you could pre-order computer cases. Like, why is that a thing that needs to happen? Who's buying like computer cases in bulk? So that's what I wanna know, man. Uh, I just thought it was really kind of strange and funny that uh, that happened. Anyways, this is kind of weird because like anytime you go down a slope, Mario drops the spring. Uh, I can totally make this. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. But um, yeah, hopefully the case will ship on the 23rd. I might get it by the end of that week and then I can, you know, actually build the computer. I've ordered all the other parts already, so those are coming in over the next couple of days. Um, but I mean, I can't really do anything until I have the case since so much of this build, um, revolves around like both the liquid cooling setup and the case. I can't just like start doing things without it, so to speak, to save myself some time. I can do a couple of things, but it's nothing substantial. Like anything that I could do, um, would take like, I don't know, 10, 15, at most 30 minutes to complete. Um, for this one, yeah, stand over here, wait until the timer runs down, and you'll hit, like, a secondary switch, but more importantly, you can go in this red pipe, which will lead you to the second star coin. So, that's sort of where I'm at with the, uh, whole, like, new computer thing, and that is actually sort of hindering a lot of work on other things as well. Um, I am pretty deep into the editing process for the Zelda documentary. Like, that video is coming along. Um, I'm going to refilm some of the A-roll stuff in probably the next couple of days, and once I'm done with that, uh, the timeline will probably be mostly full, I want to say. Um, that's not to say that the edit will be complete, it'll just be mostly filled in. There will be other things that I want to, like, add on top of that, but, um... Yeah, it's actually coming along fairly well, so hopefully I can get that done soon. Like, I kind of want to finish that video before I get this new computer that way. I don't need to worry about moving uh, certain file sets over to the new machine because that's, like, my least favorite part of uh, building a new computer is just migrating everything from one system over to the other system because inevitably something is going to get lost in the transfer and I'm just like gonna have to restart something from scratch and it's just like oh man happens every time I can be like the most thorough person when it comes to like backing up files and moving them over but um there's always gonna be that one thing that you forget or that you miss and then you won't realize that it's gone until after you've like either put the computer that it's on away or formatted like it's hard drive so it's just gone for good at that point I swear it happens every single time I've actually started to take some precautions and migrate some files over uh, preemptively because um I bought like two large hard drives and um, I plugged one of them into my current computer just so I could like start moving files onto it before I get the new system just so I wouldn't have to worry about it later and move over as much. Like, I already moved over a full terabyte of, uh, data, which might seem like a lot for some people, but, uh, for me, just because I'm constantly working on videos, a terabyte is not a lot of space, actually. That's why I bought, uh, eight terabytes of storage, just so I could make sure that I would have enough space for, um, at least a considerable future, like maybe another two or three years. But, uh, yeah, that was your update video, I guess. Thank you for allowing me to vent and get out my frustration with everything that's been going on. Um, and it was good, too, because it got us past that level that basically played itself. I mean, all you're doing is riding that platform to, uh, Bowser Jr., which, again, no one cares about a Bowser Jr. fight. You just hit him with fireballs, jump on him three times, and that's basically all there is to it.
All right, um, let's see. Well, we actually still got quite a ways to go in this world. I kind of thought World 4 was a little bit shorter. I mean, overall it might be, but, uh, seems like there's still a lot of levels in front of us. All right, let's just go up here and take on the bonus level. I think there's only actually one bonus level, so this should be, uh, 4-A, I believe. Might as well do this first, and then... We'll see where we can go from there, I guess. Why not? I mean, I gotta use my star coins for something, right, guys? I've been getting all of them, and, like, the only time I spend them is when I open up a passageway to a, a new level. So, yeah, at least, you know, they do have some value. I haven't even used them on, like, mushroom houses, but I probably will do at some point in the future, maybe. Uh, one thing I will say that I like that the newer team hasn't done yet, and I'm not sure if they're going to do it in future levels, but I'm glad they haven't done it so far, is lock star coins behind specific power-ups, because that was something that, uh, the original version of this game did, was, like, a lot of the star coins, you have to be, like, uh, Giant Mario, or, you know, Mini Mario, to reach areas where they were in, similar to how, like, you needed to be Mini Mario in order to access two of the worlds in the original game. Um, the newer team removed that function, and it seems like they've also removed the, uh, hiding of star coins behind specific power-ups, which I do appreciate a lot. It means I have, like, less of these levels to replay. Like, I'm fine with playing levels through once, even twice to get a secret exit, but, uh, for a star coin, it's just like, do I really want to do that for one star coin? Especially on some, like, the harder levels, so... I appreciate that a lot by the newer team, and I hope that, uh, they don't do that in any of the future levels. We'll have to see. Anyways, oh jeez, wow, that's actually kind of tricky. They expect you to pull off a wall jump, and if you fail, it's death for you. Oh, come on. All right, we're good. Easy level, man. Wasn't even scared. Just kidding. My hands were totally sweating on that last couple of jumps there, but we're good, man. We're good. I got that platforming prowess. No problemo. All right, let's head down here and take on 4-4. Actually, you know what? There might not be much left to this world now that I think about it. Like, the levels can go by pretty quickly, so I'm not too concerned with it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to bother with that fire flower because I already got two, man. Like, what more do I need a fire flower for? I'll grab this star coin, though, because, uh, you know your boy is all about those star coins. Alright, this is actually a pretty interesting level. Um, I'm not even sure, like, what these bone platforms would have replaced in the original game, because I don't seemingly remember anything in New Super Mario Bros. DS that raised up and down. There might have been something, I just can't remember what it was. So those might be entirely new, which uh, is, is kind of cool. Like, I'm always glad to see new things that the newer team puts into these games because, I mean, they're already working with, like, a limited, um, like, environment, I guess you could say, since, like, they have to work in the confines of the game and the game's engine, so... I'm always surprised, like, when I can see entirely new things programmed into these games that are older, because it's pretty impressive. Like, look at Mario 64. Mario 64 is a great example of just, like, a game that you can pretty much add anything into. Like, there's so many just crazy and bizarre Mario 64 mods out there, and it's just, it's kind of cool to play through them all, or at least, you know, watch videos on them. Um, that, like... Cappy mod for Mario 64. I made a video on it a while ago before Odyssey came out. Like, that was such a crazy mod for the game because it just allowed you to take control of anything in Mario 64, similar to how, you know, Cappy works in Mario Odyssey. So, stuff like that is really impressive to me because it's like, how did they pull that off, you know, given the limitations of the game's engine? But I mean, I'm not a games programmer, so maybe that's actually easier than, uh, I imagine it is, I don't know, but, you know, whatever, it's still kind of cool, and that's just, like, a great example of a game that can be turned into pretty much anything, given the, uh, people and talent behind it, so to speak. 
Anyways, yeah, I've sort of like given up on just like getting the higher scores on the flagpoles. I really don't care anymore. So it's just like, hey, flagpole, let's just finish off this level, baby. All right, the world for ghost house. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there is a secret exit in this level and it's right at the very beginning. So I'm actually going to go and get that one first because it just makes sense to. Um, it takes less time to actually get to the secret exit than it does to actually do the level. Plus, there is a Stark one, I believe, uh, in this secret exit. But, um, hit that switch, run back to this original door, and that's really all there is to it. Like, it dumps you right out at the secret exit. And, yeah, the Star coin right down that pit. So, let's sneak behind that. Boo! And, alright, well, that didn't exactly work like I planned it, but, uh, good enough, baby. We got the star coin. We got the secret exit. Now we can actually go and do um, the rest of the ghost house. That just leads us to a cannon, which, again, I'm never actually going to make use of. I don't even know where that cannon goes. It probably goes to World 6, if I had to guess. But uh, I'm not going to find out, so I really don't care. What do you got for me? Ooh, a fire flower. Well, I most certainly do appreciate that, since... uh. You know, I kind of lost my power-ups, but hey, we're good now. We're back. Um, I think now what you want to do is just pay close attention to these doors. Uh, basically, something will always be different. And whichever one is different is the one you want to go inside because that will allow you to actually make progress through the level. So, yeah, down there, like, that door is on a different style platform. That's the one you want to go inside. But first, up here is actually where we're going to find a star coin. So now that we got that, uh, in this room, what you want to do is hit all these switches. There's going to be two red ones, I believe, and um, this orange switch. So obviously, the door that corresponds with the orange switch is the one that you want to go inside. So, middle door it is, and then, um, oh, this is just the halfway room. Literally nothing special about this, so just move on through. Um... I actually don't know what the tell is for this room, but the door you want to go in is the middle one. And, um, for this room, you actually want to go on the leftmost platform. Again, I'm not really too sure what's actually indicating that you want to go into the left one. But I know every room does have at least some sort of a tell to it. I'm just not exactly sure what those ones are. Like, even here, this pipe is lower than all the other pipes. So you go inside. Bada bing, bada boom, there's your star coin. The level's over, everybody. Forget about it. It's as easy as that. So, yeah, it's not really that hard of a ghost house. There might be, like, a couple things here or there that you might need to play through at least one time just to understand sort of the layout of the level and where all the doors go. Or you can just get lucky like I did, so that sort of worked out as well. Anyways, oh boy, more spiders. I swear, every time these guys show up, like, the game lags a bunch, so... Not looking forward to that, man. Although, it could be, like, this new recording software that I'm using because I do feel that it's a little bit less fluid than the previous software that I was using. It might just be, like, a placebo, though, because, I mean, relatively speaking, I'm playing fine. I'm not really missing any of my jumps or anything like that, so... I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. Also, bro, can you just move over here so I can bounce off your face and get the star coin? Jeez. Oh, I just sort of realized, like, I was sort of squinting at my screen, like, why is it so dark? Then, obviously, yeah, I just realized that's part of this level. We're in a cave, and it's darker. Um, I don't particularly like that because it's kind of hard to see everything, but, you know, whatever. I guess I'll get by. Um, I suppose the darkness and um, the fact that all these platforms are falling is, like, the gimmick of this level. Oh, I just realized, yeah, that's a balancing platform. I was like, why is that breaking apart so slowly. The difficulty there is that uh, you gotta balance on it, but these platforms are sort of glitchy. You can just like start the tipping cycle and then stand like maybe a step or two to the other side and that usually stops them from tipping over. So yeah, not exactly as hard as maybe they thought it was going to be or maybe they just wanted it to be easy because I mean, after all, it's just a star coin. So who really cares? And you know what? I will grab that third star coin. Boom. All right. Um, we should, yeah, be close to, like, the end of this level. Whoa, okay. We're fine, man. We're all good. No big deal. And there's the flagpole. That's what I like to see, baby. 
Sweet. So I think there's just uh, one more level left before the castle. Wow, this actually was a short world. It seemed longer than it actually was for sure. I'm excited though. Let's get to it. Um, the castle is also a anchor again. So probably gonna be an underwater level. Not exactly thrilled about that, but hey, what are you gonna do? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think... No, was this... I think they actually did have, um, moving up and down environments in the original. Okay, fireballs don't kill those guys. That is go. Oh, I got so lucky there. I sort of just, like, jumped into the poison. I didn't really think about it until after I'd already jumped. Thank goodness the, uh floor rose up to catch me there but um yeah like I was saying I think they did have this whole up and downward floor thing in the original game yeah no cuz I remember um I think in the world 2 castle there's a part where you press a button to raise the floor and then like a spiky ball rolls down towards you so nothing new I don't know why I was like impressed by that I really shouldn't be it was in the base game not that cool. All right, I will grab this fire flower though. Um, we already got two of the star coins, and yeah, not today, but oh. All right, fine. I guess you will get me today with that one. You sneaky, sneaky, spiky ball. There we go. Nope. Get up there, Mario. Hit the switch, my dude. All right. Um, can I get a power, please? No. Fine. You know what? I don't need your stupid power up. I do, however, need this star coin. There we go. And uh. Wow, I guess we're actually done. And fine, I'll get the top of the flagpole just for good luck. There we go. Sweet, all that's left is the castle. I'm actually really excited to finish off World 4 because I kind of want to know what's next in World 5. Like, what theme are they going to think of next? That's always my favorite part about finishing a world is just um seeing what's going to be in the next world. And oh man, it is an underwater level. I kind of figured it would be, but uh, that's kind of lame. Oh well. Um, ooh, a hammer bro suit. Nice. Oh, it's actually really useful because um, there's ghosts in here, and for whatever reason, yeah, the hammer bro suit allows you to kill ghosts. Well, all right, I guess not these guys because uh, they're too big, so our hammer just bounces off them. But uh, yeah, these guys, we can just like run directly into them genius I like how I took out a majority of that ghost ring and still somehow managed to take damage there because I was too impatient to wait for like a bigger opening to open up for myself good job Matt good job really choice gameplay right there yeah well hopefully uh, we can get like a replacement to that suit cuz I would really like to be able to kill some ghosts in the future, should I need to. Uh, no, that one's just coins. I feel like one of these has to be a power-up. Please? Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now I can take out some ghosts, these weird shark guys. Nothing is gonna stand in my way. Wow, those vortexes are uh, pretty powerful, actually. I thought you could swim over them, but they sort of just suck you down directly into them. Not a fan, man. Not a fan. All right, come on, Mario. You can do it. Get in the pipe. Hey, we got the one-up. Not even bad. All right. Um, I guess we're halfway done with the castle. I'll take two of them. Why not? You know what? The fire flower, as much as I love it, um, I think in this scenario, having the hammer suit, probably better than a fire flower. Um, oh, you know what? I do need to bullet jump over here, I think, so... Come on, there we go, and how in the world did I miss that? How did I actually miss that jump? All right, let's uh try this again. I actually think I need two bullets because um, I'm pretty sure there's a star coin over here that I can only reach by performing a bullet jump, so I'm gonna watch this guy, and come on, we got it. Yeah, there we go, perfect jump arc. That's what I'm talking about. Pro MLG Mario gameplay only found on this channel and uh, probably any other channel that plays Mario because Mario is not a hard game, man. Really not that difficult to play. <laughs> oh, jeez. And we'll just go right through there. The eye of the needle, so to speak. Whoa. Giant bonsai bills coming all over the place. Not gonna stop me. Uh-oh. You know what? I'm just gonna, yep, intentionally take damage 
grab that star coin. I'm not risking losing that. And maybe, haha, look at that. The game's nice enough to give us another power up and some extra time, which I don't really think I needed, but thanks a lot, game. All right, and now it's boss time, baby. Who are we fighting? I actually don't remember who the boss is of uh, this world. Oh, it's apparently Dry Bowser. I'm not sure if Dry Bowser was um the boss for this world originally or not. Can't remember. Whoa, okay, chill out, dude. Um, ooh, okay. Yeah, I thought maybe I could make that on the first cycle, but uh, unfortunately, he's a little bit tricky. Maybe I can get it on like the second one. Come on, dude. Oh, he's not jumping. He's not jumping. You're trying to trick me out, Bowser. I don't appreciate it, my dude. Oh, come on. No, wait. Ah, never mind. Perfect. See you later, buddy. That wasn't exactly how I planned that fight to go, but, uh, you know what? We still came out victorious, so what do I care, man? We are done with World 4, baby. Now, hopefully, uh, we can go to a better, less laggy world. Or, you know, maybe I can actually fix the emulator. And no, this is even worse somehow. Yeah, like, what is actually causing the lag here, man? Is it the snow? I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.